Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. Let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people with real stories. The struggle to play it forward. Episode number 619 is with TV event director Jeff Margolis, the author of the brand new book, We're Live in Five. Yeah, I got you, but your oh, picture didn't come. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I don't have a picture either. And it didn't have that little funky little uh, button that says uh, recording and stuff. So, all right. That's why I disconnected. I'm going, oh, I'm missing a valuable part here. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, uh, you're uh, you're rolling and um, you've got till 50. Go ahead with Jeff Margolis. Well, there you go, Jeff Margolis. We just had a live moment. Hey, Arrow. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. I got to tell you, what I love about what you've done here is, is that you're reminding modern day broadcasters, as well as those that are coming this way, that being live is a talent. It's a skill that needs to be trained. And, and, and you really dive into that, in, into the way of being truthful. I do. I do. I wanted to share, I wanted the reader to feel like they were part of it, like they really knew what was going on. You know, people watch television and they have no clue what it takes to get a show like the Academy Awards or the American Music Awards, any of those big award shows. They they don't have a clue what it takes to put them together. So I thought I'd share the information to the best of my ability. And it's such a lost art. I mean, I realize we're getting it from America's Got Talent and 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 even in the you know some of these other shows. But the thing is, is that is that I want that live event like like the Oscars, like we recently watched. Because I don't know what you're doing behind the scenes with your earphones on or sitting inside that room. But man, I'll tell you, I mean, you're in control of of what is going to be played out. Yeah, it's. Uh... It's, you know, I never get nervous. I've never gotten nervous when I do a live show because the adrenaline just is pumping and it's so exciting. And, you know, when you do a live show, that's exactly what it is. It's live and you don't know what's going to happen and whatever happens, happens. And there's nothing you, you can do about it. You know, even a couple of years ago at the end of the Oscars, when they opened up the wrong envelope and announced <laughs> the wrong best picture, yeah. you know, it was live and it got fixed. And people loved seeing that stuff. You know, it was real. It was real. It takes a long time to put these shows together. I spent four and a half, five months working on the Oscars and that much time working on the American Music Awards and the Emmy Awards. But the Oscars is a little bit different, it takes a little bit longer to do the Oscars because it's it's a bigger show, you know, it's Hollywood, it's mm -hmm. the motion picture industry, it's the biggest, it's the queen mom of all the award shows, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that artists who come on to perform on that show for some reason or just a little bit more nervous than any other show because it's the Academy Awards. Yeah. Is it, don't you think that one of the reasons why we tune into the awards is it's more than just wa watching them win the trophy, but rather we just want to see what the flub up is going to be. We want to see their humanism. Absolutely. Listen, people watch the award shows to see, first of all, who's with who, who's wearing what, <laughs> who's sitting in the audience with who, who the nominees are. And people, they love to watch the show and they, they, they love it when something goes wrong, when, something, when Cher tripped up the steps when she was going to pick up her Oscar, when the streaker ran by that yeah. year, you know, and something like that happens. I mean, the other night, uh, John Cena and, and uh, Jimmy Kimmel did this great thing where John Cena came out, you know, naked, <laughs> uh, a playoff on that uh, streaker that ran across years ago. But it was very, very funny. And, you know, you can get away with things like that on, on the Oscars. But, but the Oscars takes a long time to put together. I mean, to, to figure out which award comes before which award and which award comes after. Yeah. And then you have to figure out who's going to present that award, who makes the best presenter for that award, and the reason for them presenting. And, you know, there's so, there's so many puzzle pieces and so much going on, but it's a thrill to put it together and then to see it come together when you actually do it. 
Are you the master of asking why? And the reason why I bring that up is because a, an architect once told me, he says, if you're not asking why, then you're doing it wrong. And because, I mean, I'm a show prep whore. I really am. I have to show prep everything to, I mean, to, to, to where it's a sickness. For you to sit back and wonder, okay, okay, where, what award's going to go next? Which one's going to go next? Do you say, why does that one go next? Why are we doing this? And, and how are we going to get to this? It's four months of asking that question. Yes, yes. Absolutely right. Why is this going there? Shouldn't it be here? Why does this work better here than down here? Yeah, that's how you put the show together. You have to figure out how to open the show. Which award is going to be the most important award to open the show? Then you have to know at each hour point where you are, you want to have something important running over the hour so that people don't change channels and look for something that's it, that's new it. to watch. Yep. Yep. You no, know, you want to keep them there. So that, that that's part of the puzzle that you put together. Hmm. So you make this rundown and the rundown changes a hundred times before you get it right. <laughs> How do you live in the present when everything that you're creating is in the future? <laughs> um it's it's interesting <laughs> it's it's interesting Wow. You know, one of the things that I'm very proud about iHeartRadio is the way that they have really adopted the the live approach when they do the iHeartRadio Music Festival, the award shows and things like that, because it proves to me that it's and that the team that's unseen behind the scenes is is just amazing to me because it has to come together as one. Yes, it has to come together and it takes a it really does take a village. You know, whenever I do one of these shows, I create a family around me of people who want to be there because I want to be there. And they, I make everybody, everybody's allowed to collaborate. Everybody's allowed to suggest things to me. Sometimes somebody has a better idea than I do, you know, of a way to do something. And if they have a better idea, I'll try it and I give them credit for it, but it's a collaborative effort. I didn't get to where I am by doing it alone. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody helps. And when you're kind to people, you don't raise your voice, you don't embarrass anybody, you don't throw anybody under the bus. You get back so much from people. They want to make you look good. They want to look good. And they want to make the show the best it can be. And these shows are really, really difficult to put together. Yeah. yeah. Because like the Academy Awards is viewed by over a billion people in the world, a billion over a billion people. And you want it to be the best it can, the most entertaining it can be. Not the most perfect. You try and make it perfect. But you know it's not going to be because it's live on the air. And you can't worry about that stuff. You can't worry about what's going to happen. And if something does go wrong, it's gone. It's yeah. live on the air. It's gone. <laughs> it's over. You've got to just move on. you got the rest of the show to do. Oh, my God. I remember those early days of radio when I would screw up and, and I would I would just I would hold on to that thing for weeks because I screwed up over a 14 second intro. And then when 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 it goes longer than 14 seconds, I mean, it's just a fun thing. I mean, I live off that anxiety. Yeah, sure. Sure. You know, and the saying it is what it is really is true in in live, whatever you do on the radio, on television, it is what it is. I mean, and it's gone. When it's live, it's gone. You can't go back and fix it. When a camera's out of focus, when a camera's on the wrong shot, when a microphone doesn't open at the big first four bars of a song, when somebody trips or they're looking at the wrong camera, it is what it is. Thank you. Next. Moving on. We live in this age now where broadcasting schools are disappearing and they're, what they're doing is they're creating these little, these schools that where we can teach you inside two months. And, and it's like, wow, that, that experience is, is being left behind. How do we train the future to understand that something as important as being live is a, it's, it's something that you've got to study and, and experience. It's not about the editing anymore. You've got to be present. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Um, I just think 
I think those people that go to those two month schools and then get a job and think that they can, you know, just do, just make it happen, learn very quickly that it doesn't happen that way. <laughs> right. It doesn't happen that way. <laughs> and you get found out very quickly too. If you don't have the talent or if you can't stand up to, you know, the, the challenge of what you're supposed to do, you're found out quickly and you don't get asked back. Yep. Yep. I got to ask you a question. Be two creative people here. Um, we surround ourselves with, with a winning team. But then that one thing, when the show is over, the post-production blues, what is your team like afterwards when you have to go home to be Jeff? After doing the live show you're talking about. Yes, because because you give everything to that moment. But then when it's over, the adrenaline is gone. Right. And fortunately for me, I can't speak for everybody, but fortunately for me, I finished the Oscars <clears throat> and the next day I was in the production office starting work on another show. Good, good, good. You know, so you don't really have time. And occasionally uh, I would finish the Oscars and I would have two weeks and I would pack my family up the next day and I'd get out of play. And, and I'd be in Hawaii and I'd be lying on the beach, not thinking about anything. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you really have to unwind. Those things are so much, those live shows are so much. Sometimes you really need to just take a moment. The book we're talking about is we're live in five. Um, did you turn into a perfectionist while putting these paragraphs together? I've, I'm always a perfectionist. <laughs> I'm always a perfectionist. Yeah, I want everything to be as perfect as it can be. Yes. And, uh, you know, when you're doing a show that you get to go into an editing room and fix, those are always perfect. When you're doing a live show, they're not perfect when they're on the air. So you try and make them as perfect as you can going in, mm. you know? And then whatever happens, happens. And you've done all you can do. One of the greatest lessons that I've learned inside this book is the fact that you are always prepared to receive. And so then what happens is you take what you've received in thought and now you've shared it so that we can receive. That in itself, that that's one heck of a, man, that, that, that's a journey. But at the same time, it's also very giving of your heart. Thank you. Yes, um... I'm not quite sure what your question is. That was a very nice statement. Well, that you crea made. creative people. Asking. Well, I, I look at creative people as being gifts from from the universe. And so, when when we get ideas, it's because the universe is speaking directly to us. And now we have to take what was given to us. It may not be in English. It may not be in a language that we know. But we're going to figure it out and make sure that those who are going to receive it really, you know, have have entertainment or an escape. Right. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's a challenge, and it's a great challenge. And uh, it, what you know, the thing that fascinates me is how all the puzzle pieces come together. And at the end of the day, it's like giving birth to a child. I imagine <laughs> I'm not a woman, so I don't know. But um, I've spoken to my wife about it and many other women. It's like giving birth to a child. You know, you work so long on these shows, and then. You know, in three hours, they just come out, you know, <laughs> and they're alive and they breathe and they, you know, they just they are what they are. They're just existing as new things. It's it's fabulous. It's the greatest feeling to work so hard on something to make it right and then to to put it together and see it come out right and know that you've entertained people, you've mm -hmm. made people happy, and you've given people the opportunity to say, oh, my God, <laughs> did that really just happen? Yeah, because Water Cooler Conversation is now on the Internet. And so, I mean, I mean, instantly people are reacting to what you're putting out there. Absolutely. God, Absolutely. that's got to be scary. Well, it is what it is, you know? It is what it is. Mm, mm. Listen, my job is to, my job has always been to do the best job I know how to do to make 
the artists on the other side of the camera look as good as I can, sound as good as I can make them sound, and feel as comfortable as I can make them feel. So I always try and give an artist anything they want to the best of my ability. And sometimes there's a problem and you can't give them exactly what they want. So you better have a solution that will work for you and will make them happy at the same time. So it's never easy. It's never easy. You know, you, you, you're, you're like that, that coach that we all want. We, want. we want that coach that listens to us, that wants to promote us, that, that you know, put us in the game and things. What, what are they learning from you that they're going to take to their next job? In which capacity you're talking about? In the way that, God, I mean, if if I could spend three days with you, I would walk away a totally 100% different person. And I think that the actors and and the presenters and everybody that works on your projects have got to feel the same way, that when they know that your name is is, is on the bill, it's like, oh, I'm going to learn something. This man is so giving. Yes. I've, I've gotten that a lot. I get it from people who work with me, my production staff and my crews, they always enjoy working on a Jeff Margolis production because we work hard and we have a good time mm-hmm. doing it. Mm-hmm. As far as artists are concerned, they know when they come back and Jeff Margolis is directing a show, they know that they're going to be well taken care of. That's nice. And people who are artists who are difficult, you know, they test you the first time that you work with them, they test you. (laughs) And they want to see if you can pass their test. And I always pass the test. (laughs) And so they look forward. No, I do. I'm sorry, I do. No, I love that attitude. Yeah, and they look forward to coming back. Oh, we're working on a Jeff Margolis show. We know we're in good hands. He's got our back. He's going to take care of us. We're going to sound good. We're going to look good. It's going to go smoothly. And it's going to be fine. And, you know, one of my mantras, and I say this when I'm on headset uh, about a minute before I ever go on the air doing a live show, there are four or 500 people on headset. I say to everybody, good luck, everybody. We're we're going to have a, a good show. I want you all to have fun. And it's going to be great. That's my mantra. It's going to be great. I always end up, it's going to be great. Five, four, <laughs> three, two. No, seriously, that's what I do. I so I give everybody the inspiration that we're going to have a good time. We're going to work hard. And it's going to be great. Anybody in radio and television hearing you count down like that, we're all going to giggle like kids because we have lived that moment. <laughs> Jeff, you got to yeah. come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. I'm ready to come back whenever you want me. Excellent. I'm there for you. Well, thank you for your art. You you have really brought a lot of art to our hearts and I I'm just I'm just so proud of you for saying yes to your art. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Okay, I will. Every day. You too. <laughs>